Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Hey, let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let you bang. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Let me bang you. Greetings, Marys and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that guy? Welcome to MMA Roasted Podcast. It's me, Adam Hunter, here with Bill Dawes who's killing it, the best actor in the game right now, uh, <laughs> murdering it. Uh, how are you doing, Bill? I'm doing good. I mean, it's funny you say that, but did you, have you ever, did you watch my movie? No, but I, but I definitely order them. Because um, <laughs> they bribe you. Yeah, pretty much. I, I, I will watch the movie, though. I, but I have seen you in Pinned. So uh, you did a great job in Pinned. Um, I was Pinned, by the way. I, I know it like went some festivals and stuff, and... We got we got a meeting next week with the, with the the biggest streaming network in the world, so we'll see. That's uh, uh, you know, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm actually right now I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I had a show last night. It was crazy. My one of my high school English teachers came. He lives out here, and a, b- a bunch of fighters came. And this one guy came uh, who saw me in Naples, and we were talking afterwards. And he was like, "You gotta go to my gym, man." Because I I actually went to I box today. I went to my my, my friends. This guy who came to my show, Michael Billis, he's like, yo, I'll give you a week to like my boxing classes. So that was awesome. I'm like, what time of the class is 9.30. I'm like, uh. But I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's do it. Uh, it was me and like four women in, in, in the class, but it was awesome. It was like, an, but this one guy, he's like, yo, got to take my class. Got to take my class. Blah, blah, blah. We're talking about this. And then he's talking about fighting and he goes to the other guy. He goes, hey, uh, do you know so-and-so? And he's like, the guy's like, no. He's like, yeah, uh, he was my roommate when I got locked up. And I was like, well, what'd you get locked up for? He goes, I don't want to, I don't want to tell you. I don't want to talk about it. I, Cause you'll like judge me. And like, that's now I'm thinking like 400 things, you know? So yeah, worse to say that. Yeah. I'm like, so I'm like, but I'm hoping he doesn't say like pedophilia or something or like, you know, so, so I'm like, well, what is it? Oh, Come on, you murder? Cool. Anyway. I, I saw him. I'm like, what, what'd you do? He's like, I shot somebody. So I go, who did you shoot? He's like, well, it was a robbery, but it was a mutual robbery. I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, I guess what you guys, was it like Spider-Man? That, that like Spider-Man meme where you both show up at the same time? Like, I mean, mutual. And that's all I got out of him so far. But I'm very curious yeah. as to what happened. So that's, a, that's actually a funny bit. Like two people trying to rob each other at the exact same time. I'm rob- <laughs> robbing you. Only in Arkansas. It's like whenever I, I go to Vegas and like those like prostitutes come up to me, like, hey, you know, you want, you want company? Uh, and I'm like, well, what do you do? And she's like, I'm an escort. I'm like, well, I'm an escort too. I'm like, well, listen, I always play the I'm an escort also. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. How, much, how much are you, like, you going to pay me? You're like, oh, whatever. Uh, have you ever been arrested or no? Oh, <laughs> hold my beer. Yeah, I've been arrested several times. Really? But I mean, yeah. For what? When I- so I, did, I, I stole a car. I did some breaking and entering. I got arrested in Egypt for, for a suspicion of homosexuality, which I think we talked about. Uh, no, we didn't talk about that. They found my ass shots on my phone because I got involved in the kerfuffle. <laughs> they took my phone. They sold ass shots, and I thought that I was at the pyramids to lure homosexuals. There's articles about it in Egyptian newspapers. I wow. Send you- yeah. So what, what happens if you get caught being a homosexual in Egypt? You, well... 10 out of 18, people know this, 10 out of 18 Muslim countries, it, it's the death penalty. In Egypt, it's not officially the death penalty, but it's kind of the death penalty, depending on what homosexual act you might be engaged in. <laughs> Apparently, picture of your butt on Instagram is like enough for being detained for three days in Egypt. The, the, but like when, when people go to jail, isn't there more homosexually committed? Do they then like, would they isolate you by... <laughs> Like, I mean, you would think yeah. that'd be the last place you. That's crazy. And then when you stole yeah. a car. When did you? When did you steal a car? When I was like a sophomore in, in high school and stuff like that, just dumb stuff like jumping turnstiles. I jumped a turnstile once and went to jail for twenty four hours. Didn't you go to Princeton? <laughs> the biggest jail of all. But I'm yeah. saying, like, aren't you not like you got into Princeton after having an arrest? That doesn't mean I'm not stupid. 
No, I, no but I thought like if you get arrested, like, like looks bad uh, on your uh, record. Is, there, there are things like when I sold the car, they, they, they took it off my record because I, I knew the family of the car they took it from. Oh my so God. They didn't press charges. So stuff like that doesn't like stay on the record. Wow, damn, I had no idea you were such a, a, a criminal. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. Good old uh, days. All right, well, speaking of uh, crazy things, so it got announced yesterday that Jorge Masvidal is fighting Colby Covington. I uh, love that. That's going to be a great fight. Um, you know, it's funny, like, you, it's like you always, like, it's like these guys, they, they finally make the top, right? And then it just seems like it's such a hard fall. Like Tyron Woodley, remember when he knocked out? I remember when he knocked out Robbie Lawler because I had money yeah. on that. And then he was like the ch- he was the champ. He was the yeah. And then since then it just was like down, down, down. I mean to the point where he got knocked out by Jake Paul on TV. Like it's just crazy, right? Yeah. Um, but I guess you know they they say it's not getting there, it's staying there. That's the hardest part. Or well, the motivation way once you get there to the top, right? What's that? The motivation can go away once you've gotten to the top, right? Yeah, right. People say, you know, uh, it's like Sinbad said, you're the funniest when you're riding the bus. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, but Masvidal, I almost put him in that same category of like when he knocked out Ben Askren in six seconds, he was the biggest star mm-hmm. in MMA. I mean, aside from like, let's say McGregor, but it was not only did he beat Ben Askren, he beat him in six seconds, but since, and then he beat Nate Diaz. But since then, he's lost to uh, Usman twice. And, um, I mean, there's no shame in that. But, yeah. he, but he's looked – like, Colby is a huge – is a big favorite. Is that three to one? Or, I think, or, or at least two to one? Um, you, if you would have asked me after that Ben Askren fight, who I mean, everyone would have picked Masvidal, Masvidal, Masvidal. What? But now it's like, based on how they looked against Masvidal recently, I guess you got to pick Colby, but – Colby was, was pretty close to being stopped by Mos, by uh, Usman too. I mean, he was he was he was rocked. He, he was hurt. Fight, but but I think Colby's going to win. I hate to say it. And they train together a lot. I, I just I think if Colby fights emotional, he can lose because together a lot. And Colby has more has more of a say in who he fights. I think Colby must know he can beat him. I feel like Colby said he wanted to fight Shamayev. I, I, Colby doesn't care. I mean, in Colby's mind, he could beat any, every single person, in, in the, which is why he's Colby Covington. Uh, Dakota yeah. Bush uh, is joining us. Right now. Uh, who do we like, real quick? Colby Covington or Masvidal? Um, I think Colby gets it done, honestly. Uh, I think, you know, they know each other, obviously. Uh, they know their ins and outs. I just think Colby's just on a different level than Masvidal. And uh, like you said, he ain't scared of nobody. And, um, you know, look at the, the pressure and comeback he was putting on Usman in those later rounds, you know. That I just don't crazy. see Masvidal dealing with it. I had that fight a draw. People think I'm crazy. I actually I had it uh, a draw. I had Kobe winning f- uh, three, four, and five, and Usman winning one, and then round two uh, it was uh, a 10-8. But, you know, people say you got to beat the champ. Are you in a rubber suit right now? I'm on a bus right now going to Whole Foods here in a bit. So. So what was like, that part- on your on your uh, <laughs> a photo just popped on your screen what is that screensaver it's like a turkey or something <laughs> yeah yeah it's turkey <laughs> so so you're in las vegas you're fighting this saturday and you're have you have you you, you have to make weight tomorrow right uh dakota uh bill is that my connection or his I think it says, this is how busy they, they, they're always traveling to go to like a new dojo or to train. talk to them. So they're always moving in their car, which is why they break up sometimes. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, D- uh, Dakota, so what's, what's yeah. so, uh, like I was saying, you're, um, you're weighing in tomorrow, right? How much weight do you got to cut? Um, I only got like 11 pounds left. So, super, super easy cut ahead of me. Nothing. <laughs> is that a joke? No, no, for real. That's that's not shit. How my do you first fight? Pounds. How do you? My first fight pounds? against Hubbard, it was it was thirty one pounds in six days. So this ain't gonna be you know nothing. I'm I'm water loaded. It's gonna be a breeze. So how do you lose eleven pounds twenty four hours? Um, sitting in the tub, sauna, whatever you guys do. It sucks. Don't get me wrong. It sucks, but um, it it's you know I've done this my whole career, so. 
it's uh, it's worth the payoff at the end. You know, all I'm thinking about, I'm not even thinking about the fight. I'm just thinking about what food I get to go fuck up after this. All right, so I sit in the tub a lot, and I don't lose eleven pounds. Uh, what what is it? How is it the Epsom salt tub? Is that what you're talking about? Um, some people do that in salt. I don't. Um, you know, I don't have any sodium in me this week, so the water is just starting to shed, and um, you know, water loading. You know, the previous days, it's going to help just keep flooding the body. And what's water loading? Um, just a gallon of water or two gallons of water? How much water are you drink? I drank one Tuesday and then two yesterday, and then today I'm just sipping as when I'm thirsty. Now I used to when I when I used to cut weight in wrestling in high school and college, I would spit in a cup all day. Uh, do you do, yeah. any, do you do that? Do you like spit? Um, on the day of, it it just depends on how close I get down. If I'm feeling good and I feel like I could, you know, spit off half a pound, I will. But. You know, it's you know how it goes. It just depends on the day or how you're feeling. And then, and then there were kids that would stand on, on like their head before they weigh in. Uh, they said that yeah, I never. I don't okay. get that. I never understood that one, but I've seen people do it too. All right, so you are now you are you now, are you wearing rubber suits and then going on the on the bike for a couple hours? No, no, I'm not gonna. You know, because that's just taxing on the body. So, uh, you know, I might get in a sauna suit, you know, after getting out of the tub just to keep my body sweating. But So you're um, going gonna to lose 11 pounds doing no cardio? Correct. Wow. Just water with no sodium is a trick because I got to lose – I can't lose five pounds. <laughs> yeah, like but you got to understand, too, is uh, I'm going to put on 20 pounds tomorrow after weigh at least. Jesus. That's insane. So you're gonna walk into the fight at 180, and you're fighting 55. Correct. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Bold move. I like this. Now I got a couple things. Your nickname was Dakota Harry Bush, which I think is great. Harry Bush. I w- but they not allowed to say it, right? Yeah. The, yeah. I talked to Bisbing and Dominic Cruz yesterday, and they were saying ESPN told them that uh, you know they're not allowed to say it. So. Um, I don't know why they won't, but they'll say uh, – I'll be in a minute. Uh, they say Raw Dog for Brandon Royval, which I feel like is a little more touchy than Harry Bush. But I mean, they say axe murderer. Like, wh- why, why can't you say axe murderer or, like, fucking killer or, you know, this, whatever. The, whatever. I, I oh, yeah. murder babies, but, but you can't yeah. say – what's wrong with the Harry Bush? That's America in a nutshell. No sex, but murder is fine. Everywhere. Yeah, no kid. If I, I, I don't know what to do except for beat this dude's ass and then demand it after I fight. <laughs> now, do a lot of girls send you pictures of Harry Bushes? Uh, has that been a thing? Like, or no? Um, I, I used to get, like, you know, weird, like, Harry Bush accounts and get, like, private message on Instagram and open it up and be like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I know. Now, I thought you had the best nickname, but then somebody else, you know, it started a whole thread. I tagged you. Have, like, you read some? Yeah. I don't know, man, because some of them were actually pretty good, too. I got to say. The, uh, the one I thought was really good was the sexual healing. His last name was healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sexual healing was good. And then there was another one that was uh that that was actually really good. It was uh the the pink pounder. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, like, or the the Brazilian guy with just the nickname of Nick Diaz or Nate yeah, Diaz. Nate Diaz. That was his whole nickname. Nate Diaz. It was great. <laughs> uh so now your first uh fight, I thought you were doing well. I watched it like ten minutes ago. So you fought Austin Hubbard on one week notice. They call you up. You're, you're like, fuck it. And you lost 36 pounds in six days. 31, yeah. You have 31 pounds in six days. Then you're actually kicking ass. You're winning the fight. He didn't just poke you with one eye. He put two fingers in your eye. Yeah. Like, he, I mean. All three he, fingers. I mean, he, he, they, fingered, you know, he fingered the Harry Bush. Uh, he with, did. Oh, with, with two fingers. Now, how much did that affect the fight? Uh, not at all. Uh, oh, you know, the only thing that affected the fight was was just me being on short notice and uh, my game plan was you know I knew I was gonna have the gas tank to beat him so I was like fuck it I'm going in there I'm supposed to lose this fight on paper I'm gonna try and knock his ass out and uh 
after the first round, I, you know, my tank was gone, but he still couldn't get me out of there. So, you know, someday in the future, I'd love to get that fight back. You threw one punch. You threw like a, uh, a hammer fist. That was pretty yes. cool. Is that, was that what Yeah, you I do that moves? shit all the time. Yeah, I'm going to do it tomorrow, uh, Saturday night too. A standing hammer fist. I've never seen yeah. that part. I've never seen that. I mean, yeah. It, it, like this? Like yeah, this. just like uh, moving and you just pump, like whack-a-mole right on top of the head. Have you ever knocked anyone out with that? No, it, it's not even, you know, there's really no power. It's just like a fuck you move kind of. Yeah. Now, you got taken down in the last fight. You were the Missouri State champion the, the, uh, in wrestling. What, your wrestling coach, did he, was, did he call you up pissed off? Because I'm a wrestling coach, and, and you're the state well, champion. Uh, well, so I'm not a state champion. I don't know where all that always came from. Um, it's always been since I came up, people said it, and it just, I guess it stuck. Right. But, no, he, he understood. But, yeah, he was saying, you got to get your shit together, man. <laughs> <laughs> now your dad's your coach as well as your father-in-law uh now was he your coach and then you started banging his daughter and was that awkward <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's pretty much how it went down and uh you know i had to have that talk like hey man um i'm uh talking to your daughter now and oh my i was super nervous and actually the day it happened was jake collier he's fighting on the card too and he trains with me he took me down in the gym and was holding me down. And then Patrick, our coach, came down and got in my face and was like, you do realize, you know, if you fuck anything up, what's going on here? We could, we could get rid of you permanently and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's some Missouri justice right there. Uh, oh, yeah. That's deep woods, backwoods shit there. So we can get rid of you permanently. That's pretty now. Wow. But that's got to be pretty cool that your wife understands – your lifestyle because of her dad, right? Correct. That's, that's probably the biggest saving grace is, you know, she's grown up around it. She understands, you know, the time and, um, you know, everything that goes into weight cuts and the fight camps. And so she's super supportive and, you know, it's still stressful. It's still taxing on her and the kids, but you know, if it wasn't her, I don't know if someone else could really deal with it, you know? I don't know. Wives who support our careers. Could you oh, imagine? Dude, it's like the my, my, my wife gets so I get I, I, I like get a job. Really? So you're gonna leave me alone? I'm just like, oh like I get the anti. I love I've I have a very supportive wife, but sometimes it's hard because like I, I travel a lot and then I got I know the first day I love you, I miss you. Day two is great. Day four, I didn't sign up for this shit. I'm a single mother. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And then like day five is I I like miss you again. Then I come home, and then after an hour, she's like, when are you leaving again? <laughs> she's like, yeah, exactly. It's, I, I like it better when you're training, or, and then when I'm gone all week, it's, you know, it's, it's so rough with the kids without you. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I'll be home Friday. And Friday rolls around, and I can't wait till Monday gets here so your ass is gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly I, – I, I, I've gotten when are you leaving from the ride home from the airport. Like I haven't even, I didn't even make it to my house, and she's like, "What are you on the road again?" It's so um, now. Do your do your kids watch your fights? Um, I have a six year old boy and a two year old daughter. Um, my boy, he's watched you know fighting a lot, and he gets it you know for the most part. So he'll probably watch it, and my daughter might watch it. She loves sitting down and watching the fights, which blows me away. Like if we turn them on, she'll get her little recliner and pull it up and. To sit in front of the TV, so she she loves going to the gym with me. He hates going to the gym, but when I can take her to the gym, she loves going, and it's it's pretty cool. That is years old, young enough to get started jitsu and stuff like that, right? Can't you start getting them uh, training? Yeah, my my son's in wrestling. He's uh in wrestling season right now, so um, that's what's kind of been shitty for me uh, through this camp at least was it's his first year wrestling and. Uh, I'm not there to coach him because I've been in Kansas City in training for, you know, the past five, six weeks. So that sucks. But after this fight, I'll get to, you know, get the last three or four weeks of the season with him. Did I tell you what happened at the MMA Awards? Mackenzie Dern was there with her husband, who's like a, a professional surfer, like the coolest guy. Anything that you think of like as a surfer is this guy, like yeah. laid back, good looking, just chill. And he does jujitsu. And, and Mackenzie Dern's daughter and my daughter became instantly best friends. 
Uh, she speaks no English, the girl, like a couple words, but like uh -huh. dancing, running, playing. And I felt terrible because Mackenzie was so nice. And I wanted to be like, hey, I'm sorry for the 19,000 jokes I've written about. Like, she didn't know who I was. <laughs> I like just wanted to say, I'm sorry. And then just be like, that's it. But she was so nice. So they're playing and Mackenzie, her daughter does jujitsu. She's two. Uh, and was oh, wow. kept, kept taking my daughter down. My daughter didn't know what, I didn't know what, my daughter's looking at my wife like, what's going on? Like, but she thought I was just playing. Like she, the other girl was like, oh, my, yeah. daughter, you know, my daughter was like, wanted to dance and do ballet. And she kept, she kept getting, getting double act. <laughs> like, <laughs> she kept pulling guard. But uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know. But I mean, people are like, are you going to get your kid in? I think wrestling's a little safer. I don't know if I want my daughter knowing how to choke people out or break their break arms them. and shit. Yeah, that's a little extreme. I I want my kids to have nothing to do with fighting. That's for damn sure. I, I don't wish this lifestyle upon anyone. Uh, you know, I love it, but it takes a certain breed too. And the, just the taxing and the mental aspect of it. I just, I, I mean, it teaches good life lessons, but I think wrestling could do the same. What does your wife do? Uh, she's a nurse. Oh, nice. There you go. All nice. right. So you guys are broke. I like it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You guys, listen, you, you have two amazing jobs. You both inspire people. Uh, now, is your wife dealing with a lot of COVID patients? Uh, she was uh, last year. She did, like, pretty much every day, all day. They were, like, uh, one of the COVID, like, testing sites. So she was around it all day and was just worn out with it. It's just over the top, and we're over it. Everyone we know is over it. So. You guys just COVID? getting. Um, I I had it once, but it it was like I had like a stuffy nose, and that was it. And I'm like, fuck, this ain't COVID. End up for my last fight, I got to Vegas, and I tested positive. So, uh, still, if it was, it was. I don't know if it was or not, but who knows? So your last fight, you fought with COVID? No, no. Uh, Hubbard, I fought. Then I was supposed to fight September 18th against a guy named Rong Zhu from China. And I got to fight week the Tuesday when I flew in and did my first COVID test. I tested positive. Um, well, first of all, the guy's name is Rong Zhu. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> I had some lines for him after the fight. <laughs> like, like Harry Bush versus Rong Zhu. I mean, that just sounds like, <laughs> I don't know what that sounds like. It's kind of weird fetish porn or something. Um, now, <laughs> so you got to Vegas. You tested positive. Did they pay you or not? Don't pay you. Oh, no, nah, because I, I believe you got to weigh in to get your show up money. So, and then, and then you, how do you pay? Then James Krause is your coach, right? So Correct. Krause, he's one of my coaches. Yeah. So he's cool. He's not going to take bills for that. Is he? Is he going to? Yeah. No, no. Krause was super, super supportive about it. And just like, Hey man, you know, it sucks. It is what it is. We'll get you rebooked and don't worry about it. Next fight. You know, We'll just get another camp in. And, and that's what was real, you know, uplifting for me was how positive he was about it. Like, bro, look at it like this. You got four weeks with me the first time. Now I just did another five weeks with him. He's like, you got nine weeks for this fight. So just, you know, look at it that way. So your yeah. training partner just fought Ryan Hall, right? Uh, Menner, yeah. Okay. Uh, what, what, wait, what's his, what's his name uh, again? It's Derek Menner. Oh, yeah, yeah, Derek Menner. Did you help get like, – how do you get a guy ready for Ryan Hall? Well, the, I'm not the guy to do that for sure. Um, I'm not very well versed in leg locks and that style jiu-jitsu at all. Um, but there's a couple guys at the gym that were there that were, you know, working with them every single day and that. So he, he was prepared not to get submitted, you know, and uh, he fought a tough fight. You know, that's – when you fight him in his game and his world, that's a hard fight to win. But he kept staying in the guard. Uh, he kept staying there. I'm like, you're out of your fucking mind. Uh, he, and he, I never saw a guy get hurt. Like, he, Minner hurt him a couple times. And this dude, like, fakes going to the ground like he's really rocked and goes into a, I don't know if he was rocked or not. I'll never know. I've never seen, like, does he in practice get punched in the face and then go for a leg lock? <laughs> I guess. And that's my, my whole thing is if I was fighting him, it would be – just punching and fucking doing high knees because I know he's rolling for my legs. And yeah. just if I rock him, I'm saying, get up, dude. I ain't, I ain't going down there. But, by the way, here's the problem with, with fighting a guy like that is until you're at 
you roll with someone who's like literally like top, top, top of the game leg locks, it doesn't feel the same. Like people nope. go from all the time, it's like, whatever, dude, I can stop it. But Gordon Ryan does it, and there's literally nothing I can do. You know what I mean? But that's yeah. very easy to do that. By the way, this one, is exactly. Dawes. By the way, this is Bill Dawes, Dakota. Very funny comic, great actor, uh, uh, super cool dude. Have you trained with Gordon Ryan, Bill? Yeah, I, I, I did um, John Donner's class in, in New York for years and years, for like five or six years with all those wow. guys. Gordon Ryan. Yeah. Did Gordon? Does Gordon Ryan when he goes against you? Because I mean, you're you're. Um, this was years ago. But he, I, I, but he was still a high level black belt, right? What's that? He was still a high level black belt, though, right? No, I rolled when he was a pro. He went up the ranks fast. I mean, Gordon Ryan is only twenty. I think he's your age. He's twenty seven or twenty six. Uh, he re he rose pretty fast. So you you roll with these guys even early on when they're purple belts. There's like like uh, Eddie Eddie Cummings. I don't know if anyone, but he was yeah. I know. It's him. Like next level th the thing is like people are trying to go for the heel hook all the time, and you and if you're kind of strong, you can kind of like stand up on it and kick your leg out but then there's some level there's a level of that leg lock game which is so rarefied that unless you train with it you have no idea you know and what i mean like some guys like i remember taking Vinny magalacious class in vegas and he's, yeah. like, and he's like let's roll together and i'm i'm a i'm a white belt and I, 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 I wrestled a high level wrestler but i'm like oh hold, hold, hold go easy on me he submitted me like 37 times in five minutes. Like, like he was, like, like, there was no, like, I thought he was just like, all right. You know, like when I rolled with Go, I rolled with Gokor one time, I went to Gokor's class and he was playing at me like, like I would a puppy, like a new puppy. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, you know, I was just gonna let him. This dude was like going for the sub every time. Uh, yeah. So I'm wondering, is, is that what Gordon Ryan was like? Or was he kind of like working shit out with you? You know what, it, no, it's, it's kind of like, who do we have on the box we were talking to uh, last time? Um, and he goes, boxers just box. That's Kelly, all they Kelly Pavlik. Right? So, Kelly Pavlik. Boxer, a trained boxer will always be the MMA guy because MMA guys have all these other things. If you're just a leg lock guy, if that's your main submission, you're going to beat everyone else who's trying to do a well-rounded jiu-jitsu game. Not that Gordon right. Ryan isn't well rounded but my point is like, they do leg locks eight hours a day every single day. So you're not going to be able to beat those guys at the leg lock game. So if you're fighting uh, whatever. Uh, right, Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall, you just got to, yeah, you can never go into his guard because he'll get to your leg. Yeah, your uh, exactly. He's, that's all he's going to do, and, and he knows it, and you know it. But it's, yeah. the, it's the having the, you know, the, the game plan and the mindset to stick to it while you're in there and not, and not falling for it, letting him suck you into it. Yeah. Dakota, what uh, belt are you? Me? None. I've never worn a gi in my life. Wow. Never. So you, not ever. So you you went you went straight no gi jiu jitsu. Yep. And if if I was about myself, um, just you know, I've subbed a lot of black belts in no gi, and yeah. uh, you know, I I just feel like the no gi MMA world for me, it's just I, it meshed really good for me, and uh, I can I can compete with a lot of a lot of great guys like, uh, you know, Roberto Jimenez. Yeah. Uh, he came into glory uh, last time, and I, had, I literally had – I don't know anyone in the jiu-jitsu world. And he came in, and Krause put him with me, and we were doing, like, MMA drills back and forth with gloves. And he kept taking me down. We were just fitting in. He kept taking me down 100%. And I was getting pissed off. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? And then we get done drilling. I'm like, dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whoop this dude's ass. I can't wait. We're getting ready to roll. I'm going to sub his ass. We start going and uh, ended up, you know, going a couple minutes. I'm like, ah, this guy's not too bad. End up by the end of the the five round or the five minutes, no one subbed anyone. Um, walk off the mat and like five people come up to me, like, "Damn, dude, we didn't know you were you were that good at grappling. Uh, you know who that is? I'm like, not a clue. They're like that's Roberto Jimenez. I'm like, yeah, he's not that good. <laughs> wow. And and then I end up finding out. He was probably taking it easy on me in respect to me. And, uh, but, yeah, he's a great role. He was – and I ended up watching him go with other guys like Grant Dawson and Krause. And he's a super tough dude. Yeah, a lot of these yeah, guys hard to give them. You know what I mean? A lot of the, like, the top-level yeah. guys. I, like, love Grant Dawson. He's making me – he's, like, stressing me out, though, with his fights. He, like, wins with one second left. Or he was up to – he decided to coast his last fight. I, you got to talk to him. Uh, tell him that uh yeah grant's actually here grant's actually here in my corner uh for this fight 
Uh, but, you know, that last fight, it's still not just being biased. But how the hell do you not give Grant a 10-8 round in the first round if they give, uh, whatever, Ricky Glenn a 10-8 round in the last round? Because judges are with their emotions. It's like when somebody, like, gets the shit beaten out of him in the first round, if the second round's close, they'll give it to the other guy because he, they think he shouldn't have. Or if, yeah. if one guy's super ripped and the other guy's fat, it's closed, they give it to the fat guy. It, it's just – Yeah, no shit. It happens all – it's like someone goes, key up, key up, makes these noises when they fight. They're going to give it to that person because they could hear it. it. It's a very imperfect – I don't know what the solution is, but that's probably why. Um, yeah, now, I, I've always said that too. You know, there's – everyone's asking you know what can we do different and as long as humans are doing it there's opinions and a human error involved so it's never going to be fixed you know yeah now who is via cheslev borschev and what do you know about him he's a kickboxer I, apparently he's the fucking baddest kickboxer on the planet um who trains at team alpha male none of that shit really matters to me um Everyone thinks I'm just going to go in there and, you know, grapple him, which I may. I don't know. Um, but I'm not scared to stand with this dude at all. It's MMA. It's not fucking kickboxing. And I, I'm going to I'm gonna prove it to everyone. And, you know, like me and Kraus were talking, like, fuck what anyone else says. They can put you as underdog. We're going to really show the world what we already know. So who gives a shit? The only yeah. person I'm at, like, that's what I was telling, like, when Pena beat Nunez, I was telling my, my, my wife, actually, I'm like, I think – Pena and me are the only people who think she can win. Like, and then my wife's like, well, Pena's the only person that matters. Like, everyone else, no one else matters. You're the only one in there. Uh, so you're fighting this dude, Team Alpha Male. So obviously he's some, got, probably got better at takedowns, uh, even though he is a kickboxer. He's going to have Faber in his corner? Uh, possibly. I'm not sure. Um, but your eye is not stepping in there, you know? It's it's me versus him, so I, I don't care who's in his corner. And, um, you know, you could be at Team Alpha Male. Uh, but it doesn't matter. But those guys aren't fighting for you. You you can try to learn and try to get up to my speed on grappling and wrestling. However long you've been there, it's not enough time. Oh, wait, I actually do know this guy. He came to my comedy show, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he, he was actually a real, he's actually a really nice guy. <laughs> he is. He's a super <laughs> nice, respectful guy, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, he was super nice. His wife's nice too. Uh, yeah, he he's he's really good at striking. I think he wanted to do comedy. He like legitimately wanted to become a comedian. Afterwards, he's like, "How do I get into comedy?" Uh, but yeah, this this is gonna be. A, yeah, he won on uh, the uh, contender. He's got yeah, good, yep. he's got yeah he's got good striking, good striking. But he uh, he lost split decision in LFA to William Starks. Now, do you watch the fights he loses or no? Yeah, I watched all of his fights pretty much, and. Uh... You know, he, he seems like the same guy to me in every fight. Like, he really hasn't evolved much. And I feel like every guy that he's fought, I'm better than all of them. And, yeah. uh, it, and my opponents that I fought are tougher than the opponents he's fought. That, that's like true. my strength of schedule. Yeah, you fought a lot of good guys. They freaking threw you in there, man. Uh, so I'm excited. I'm actually excited. I, I, it does suck about the, the whole hairy thing, though. I'm not going to like – Now, are you still – Yeah, no, that's – yeah. Are, now, are, 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 you, are you still working at a sheet metal place? I am for now, but, you know, it depends on how Friday or Saturday night goes. If I get in that 50K column, I'm going to tell them to, to fuck off, and I'm not coming back. <laughs> now, <laughs> make sure you film that, film that video of you telling them to fuck, up, fuck off, not come back, and post it. <laughs> and, then, and then don't test positive, please. Now, um, what exactly, no shit. Now, what is a sheet metal? What, what, what do you do? Um, I actually, uh, actually the, the company has been super great to me. You know, they let me take off whenever for fights and, you know, like this last time, six weeks and the previous time before was five. So they, they work with me super well, but we do like architectural sheet metal. So a lot of copper work, like, you know, copper gutters, copper, like, uh, downspouts and, uh, then metal roofs, copper roofs, siding, anything like that pretty much. But some of that stuff does help your 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 fighting because your your it's manual, it's physical. You have to like hands and shit, right? Definitely, uh, you know, cutting metal with snips all day, and uh, that, that's why I tell everyone I got the world's strongest grip strength just from doing that. For sure, that yeah. and that, that and uh, jerking off. Well, listen, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dakota Harry Bush, you're a great guy. Kick ass this Saturday. Uh, keep up the great work, man.
I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, man. Anytime, brother. Anytime. Take care. Uh, and where can people find you? Yep. Yeah, uh, Instagram is Dakota underscore Bush underscore 155. And uh, Twitter, it's Harry Bush 155. So. All right. Well, take care, brother. All right. I'll see you, brother. Be good. What's up, people? Bet online. I'd like to wish you a very happy new betting year as we continue to march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. It's a new year. It's a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use the promo code CLNS50 to get started. They got football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, check them out now. All right, nice guy. Yeah, he seems really cool. I love people who have like who have like like regular jobs while they're fighting. I mean, it's shitty that Dana couldn't pay a little bit more. No comment, but um, this is Dana though. I, I think Dana's paying what he can. I think it's a lot. Oh, really? His partners. I mean, Dana, he's not even the full owner. I mean, there's like uh, WME yeah. bought it, and then there's other people, and there's all kinds of you know. So, yeah. You know, it's a, a lot goes into it. Like people said, like I remember, uh, like Sam Alvey made a video recently about, and look, I don't have all the numbers in front of me. I think I think unless you have every single number in front of you, you really can't speak. Because yeah. you don't know exactly what. A lot of times things, you know, they sound better as a talking point. But Sam Alvey made a video to telling Jake Paul to shut the fuck up because he's like, listen, if, because Jake Paul was like, here's what I, here are my demands. Give 40% to the this, do that, do that, do that, do that. And he was like, listen, if, if they didn't do that, they, right now they have like 800 people on the roster or 700 people. They would have to cut like 700 fighters to do that, you know? Yeah. So they'd have a hundred fighters, which means that like there wouldn't be fights every week. There'd be a fight every two months or three months like boxing does. So you got to consider that too. I guess so. But I also feel like when these comedy club owners are always like, Oh, we can only pay you $12 a show because of the running costs and advertise. It's like, yeah, but you're also a multi multi-millionaire. So you could probably do something. I, like, I you're right. Look, I, I know you're absolutely like, it, of course. But I'd have liked to see the actual numbers. Yeah, yeah. What it costs, how much were they in the hole? Now they're out of the hole. What do they got to pay people? You know, I, I want to see what, you know, because it's easy to say they're underpaid, and that might be true. But I, yeah. I'd like, but I'd like to see what I'm actually looking at. The operating costs for for UFC are like incredibly huge. You know what I mean? Like insurance and yada yada. But who knows? Who knows? Uh, this week, by the way. So. Uh, there's a good card on Saturday. Finally, I feel like it's been it's, just a, it's so weird. They had like a fight every three days, and all of a sudden it's like two months without fights. That's COVID, uh, right? No, that's just because of the schedule. Um, but it's it's, it's uh, Calvin Cater versus Giga Chigatsi. That's the main. That's the main event. Um, a lot of people don't know these guys. But this is gonna be a banger. This guy. I mean, I think he's really blowing up right now. <laughs> and then, right. Uh, Chase Sherman versus Jay Collier, who. Like most, most guys go the opposite way where they like, they start off like kind of chubby and fat and they get ripped. He, he was ripped before. And then he just, now he's like a heavyweight. <laughs> like he went the other way. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Caitlin Chukagan's there. I guess Jennifer Maya. She's one that grunts every three seconds. She's like, huh, 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 every time she throws a punch. Um, and then, uh, TJ Brown, who was from Arkansas, who came to my show against Charles Rosa, who became a fighter because he was a chef. And he lived in Miami, and uh, he went to the gym to lose weight, and then all of a sudden he became a guy. Now he's in the, he's like in the UFC. That's but he, <laughs> like he didn't start fighting until like later on in life. And then this wow. girl that was supposed to be on the card who wrote a thing called the the uh, stripper Bible. She's a stripper, uh, but now she's um she's uh, her like I got moved. What's the stripper Bible? Do you know what what's in it? Like I didn't like, read it. Uh, <laughs> There's, it. A lot, there's a lot of books that I should read, and that's not probably one of the ones. Like, if if all of a sudden Bree is like, "What are you reading right now?" Oh, the stripper Bible. Like, I'm sure oh, that would go. I could just see that not going well at all. Um, 
so uh yeah but uh what else can we talk about man it's crazy uh so are you following you're probably not following there's a big saga but this girl shay and buys right uh-huh she um i like her a lot she she was a girl that like basically beat up her whole she was getting bullied by a bunch of girls in her high school and she and beat up her yeah it. she beat up the whole high school like she went hey, in there what how do you spell her name Shay and and she's hot. C H E Y E N N E B U Y S, right? And uh, she went beat up the whole school basically, and then got kicked kick, kick out of school, right? So yeah. she married this guy named J P. Uh, or, or, or well, her name was Shayan Vismus. Married a guy named J P. Buys, who was a fighter from South Africa, a wrestler, and they were going really well. They were they were good. They were going strong. Well, well, then they got divorced somehow, right? Uh, and which is fine, but I guess he kept her name. Like he was, I guess, in denial or something. So then there was the <laughs> article in MMA Junkie that she was missing. Right? <gasps> what? So then he writes, she's not missing. So then it, it, it got really, it be like MMA Twitter became like divorce court, as uh, somebody said that recently. But <laughs> people were like, uh, a lot of people were very invested in this. And I had a picture of both of them together, right? Because they both came to my show. like. I think like my, my, my comedy taping, it's me between the, and I was like, sorry to get in, in, between, in between you guys. That's a joke, right? And I, yeah. and I actually hit up Shay and I go, hey, can I post this? And she started laughing. She's like, yes, go ahead, right? But then all of a sudden people were like, oh, these people are out, they're out there at their low point and you're making fun of them and blah, blah, blah. What kind of a person are you? All these guys on Twitter who were like, you know, telling me I'm the, I'm the biggest asshole in the world for fucking, and like, I didn't get them, I didn't, like, it's a fucking joke. I mean, the girl laughed. She thanked yeah. me for making her laugh. So then I DM this guy a, a screenshot, like, listen, man, here's what she wrote. And then he writes, and then he makes that public, like, oh, well, uh, he said that, that she said it was okay. I'm like, all right, I'm taking this fucking down because yeah. I was trying to show that, like, I'm like, I don't care. Like, you know, it's like, and then the guy was like, you know, I find most of your stuff funny. Okay, I don't want to hear, you know, it's like, bro, I, I don't care anymore, you know, like. <laughs> Yeah, but, it, it, you get in some hot water that's that's a lot though that's a lot when you're talking about like two fighters and like a divorce situation i that know been- i know i didn't even really want to okay so all right so so ufc here so i'll read you the article because it was on a uh, bloody elbow uh hiding from what ufc's jp buys accuses cheyenne of listmas of having an affair right he he, he writes the uh basically um so then she writes, no one knows where I'm at. I'm actually keeping it that way. A lot of things happened before my last fight. Okay, so he wrote, uh, so the MMA ju- fighting wrote, Shay and Blitzmas is in hiding since UFC win. Unsure when she'll fight next, right? So then he writes and makes it public, hiding from what? In a country no one could knows where she's at. Everyone here knows she's been in Batumi, Georgia with Roman, the same guy she's been having an affair with behind my back while still married. So... So then she writes, that. what? Why would you post that? It does not make you look good in any way. It makes you look like a, I'm not going to say it, but it makes them look bad. So then, um, and then she writes, even my family didn't want me to, uh, she, then she writes, uh, no one knows where I'm at. I'm actually keeping it that way. A lot of things happened for my last fight, even my, during my fight, I decided to do his best, just escape. I've been gone now for two weeks and I love it. I'm overseas living my life. I was actually not supposed to even fight my last fight. I was asked by some high up people. They told me, please don't fight. But um, even my family didn't want me to fight, being sick, yada, yada, yada. So then he writes that. And then she responded saying, like, basically, like, leave me alone. Or everyone, please leave me alone and give me, give me privacy. So why am I even talking about this? But, I mean, it's just a matter of, like, I mean, this is what happens when there's no fights for two weeks, people. This yeah. is like, it's like, man, right? I mean, it... You feel bad. They're young. They're they're young kids. Uh, this is the problem with social media. It's the, all this stuff would have happened like twenty years ago, but no one would have known about it. Maybe she would have been in Georgia with this guy, and he would have told a couple yeah. friends. No one had opinions on it. Now everyone chimes with their opinion, and obviously the stew's in pain. It sucks, and they were both yeah. very nice people. To me, I, I've been a fan of Cheyenne ever since she was in like the LFA days. She's a, gr- a great fighter, but. I don't know what happened. I have no idea what happened. Uh, but they're young. The people- I will say, Batumi, Batumi, Georgia is beautiful. It's considered the pearl of the Black Sea. I blame her for going there and boning a guy named Roman. 
<laughs> you can't. But what if she's married, though? I mean. But aren't they separated? Yeah, I, I guess they were. Se- well, yeah, but at least wait till you're officially divorced, right? Well, I guess if you move out, then you're separated. Well, that's the thing is like they've already separated or, or divorced and then she moves and then she goes to Batuma, Georgia. And then he says it. She was also boning when we were married, too. And now she's boning me even more. Yeah, because yeah, right. I mean, if you're, yeah, like, if, if you're a guy and you're hurt, don't take it to public, right? Don't, don't be public about it. Yeah. He has a bigger dick and better lover. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what people were saying. Like, some guy in Georgia is fucking your wife, and all you do is, like, tweet. And people, everyone's like, look, man, I, I guess there is a part of me, though, that's always like, man, just be honest. Like, honesty is the best policy. And this is what really happened. So, but the problem with that is then you're going to get people's opinions. It's like, if I'm this dude, I don't want to read people's opinions. I don't yeah. want to hear people's thoughts on my marriage about some chick that I was. And plus he's like lost his last couple fights. It's like, he's, he's, the dude's had a pretty rough go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man. Burchek, uh, you're a guy full of drama. Uh, it's nice that you're yeah. in- Is that how we're going to fucking start this? Jesus. Uh, what do you think about the Cheyenne buys? JP buys drama that's going on or, or JP. Bro, yeah. So I didn't even know what was going on. And, um, one of the homies was like, bro, like you're out there. You know what I mean? Like, have you ever seen any? I was like, dude, I've never seen any of this. Like, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about or what's going on. And then he's like, yeah, with Roman. And I was like, Roman. And I, there was like, Oh, there was only one guy that came to mind. And even though I trained every morning with Roman Delize, he didn't come to mind. So like, the Roman that I was thinking of, I was like, ugh, what the fuck? Uh, and then he goes, nah, it's – and then he's like, where's this place at in Georgia? I was like, I was like, I don't think it's – I don't think it's our Georgia. I think it's another Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but not, nah, dude, it's fucking – oh, man. It's insane, right? That shit's crazy. I mean, I feel bad for JP because it's his girl that, like, left – and they obviously were in love and that w- they were like training partners or something. He was her coach and she, but it's just young. It's just young people. I think it's young people, social media. And- Bro, it, when you look at the whole thing is like, you know, Cheyenne went out to South Africa for almost a year or so, you know, maybe more. Yeah. And, uh, she falls in love with JP and then they moved to, to Dallas, you know, he gets his papers and then all of a sudden, you know, this other shit pops up and it's like I, I see it all the time with young people man it's like they're confusing lust and love you know and like what's fun today ain't fun tomorrow bro the good the good news is there's no kids involved that's the good part yeah, uh, yeah. right or do they have kids no nah, i don't think so oh. but could you imagine if like mercedes was like cheating on me with francis and ganu like i'm not gonna i can't do shit about it bro. like get a gun motherfucker i don't know <laughs> Oh my God! I, no, I can't. Th- well, I mean, you wouldn't be able to. Roman, bro, Roman's enormous. I watch him beat the shit out of Sean Strickland in a like in just a grappling thing. Yeah. And, and you know, Strickland's like, nah, nah, fuck that, run it back, fuck that, run it back. And like, I just see Roman leg lock him like thirty times in five minutes. So it's like, you just you just chalk that one up to a loss. Like, fuck. what do and you do? Same Roman. Because his name is not in the articles. The, the full name, is it? I don't think so. But they, I've, I've seen, like, they put his picture up. Okay. Yeah, by the way, Sean like, Strickland. The one, that's the, one, the one that's going around right now, like, on Strangle Squad or, like, a couple of those other, like, you, you, there's, like, Cheyenne on this side, JP in the middle, and Roman on the right side. Oh, my God. By the way, so, Bill, this guy, Sean Strickland, is, like, Colby Covington, like, 5.0. This oh, I know. Is, like, he's the biggest hothead. and. <laughs> His Twitter account is out of control. I mean, literally out of control. Uh, we actually read his tweets the last time. It's like, if my son was gay, I'd, I'd be so pissed off. Uh, but, if he was, but if my daughter was a whore, I'd be like, yeah, just like my, I mean, just nonsense. Oh, yeah. He did a Bob Saget tweet, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did Bob Saget. Uh, you know, so I, guess, for, oh, yeah, and then he, I feel like he would have laughed at this one. <laughs> yeah. I would, yeah. Uh, now, have you ever talked to Sean Strickland? Is he a nice guy? What's he like? I love Sean. Um, I, I think there's, there's certain guys that nobody likes um, because they're a specific kind of dickhead. Yeah. You know? And then, like, I get along perfectly with them because they're, they're my specific kind of dickhead. You know? Right. And it's like, 
D- does he spar ridiculous? Yes, absolutely. It, it, it's not it's not sparring. That dude's always fighting, right? But like um, when I tell like my guys are going out for travel trips and they're training somewhere, I'm like, hey, remember. Nobody has your best interests at heart. They don't give a fuck that you got a fight coming up. They also got a fight coming up. They're trying to have their best rounds for their fight. And I go, protect yourself at all times and just expect everyone to try to fuck you up. If you go into sparring with the the expectation that everyone's trying to hurt you, you're never going to be pissed off because you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, like I knew that was coming. And also I tell everybody about Strickland, like, bro, that dude doesn't fucking stop coming at you. He throws hard on everything, and he's talking the whole time, which is a fucking riot to me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I grew up with guys like that. Like, my, my number one brown belt right now, Willie Ottafree, if, he, if you're rolling with him, he's talking. He does not shut the fuck up. And it's just annoying, you know what I mean? Like, we go to other schools, and he's rolling with these black belts, and he's talking shit, and they're like, bro, like, what do you do to shut that guy up? I was like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can tell – you, you could try to choke the piss out of him, leg lock him. Like, he's going to be talking shit the whole fucking time. So, Bill, by the way, Bill, very funny comic, by the way, and a great actor. So this dude, Burchek, I knew him way back when, before in the UFC. He was trying to get in the UFC, and I, I championed him. He gets to the UFC, they throw him to the wolves, right? But he, he knocks out Joe Soto in, like, 37 seconds. Uh, then he was up against a guy who's only did leg locks, the best leg locker in the world, and this idiot fucking jumps to a leg lock with him, right? I was so mad about that happen. Uh, but, but, that's how, but that's how I ended up at 10th Planet, you know what I mean? I was doing gi jiu-jitsu, and it wasn't, it wasn't the jiu-jitsu I needed for being a, a high-level MMA fighter. So if it was never I, – I message Ian still, and I go, bro, thank you so much for that lesson because I wouldn't – have found 10 planet jiu-jitsu and i wouldn't be owning a 10 planet jiu-jitsu if it wasn't for that lesson of me getting leg locked was it was it heel hook specifically yeah it was an inside heel hook he's really really good like if you go it's uh ian entwistle if you go onto his instagram it's all a uh, all inside outside heel hook like setups from everywhere he'll shoot he was roll, they were rolling back and forth around the octagon like it was like a little kid playing thing and they just kept Heel hook, all you could do is just keep, is try to roll, roll, Dude, roll. It looked, yeah, it looked like two snakes fucking, you know what I mean? Like, it was just... <laughs> it was Dude, then he goes up against that guy who looked like he was un- going to be undefeated till Cody Nolov knocked him out. What was that his name? Yeah, Thomas Almeida. I went up against the superhero Thomas Almeida. Literally yeah. the last fight before USADA kicked in. Yeah. Uh, that dude, like, if I, could get the, if I could get the Thomas Almeida that's going around today, that'd be great. You know what I mean? Then he, then, he, then he wins this fight in UFC. He wins the next one, and they cut him. I, I left. That one I left. Oh. You, you, but you left after a win. Yeah. I, I mean, I tried, I tried testing my free agency, you know what I mean? And, like, that, that's, that's when I ended up in, in Japan. Yeah. Then he goes to Japan, and he fights. <laughs> he goes to Japan, and, and he, he fights Kaw, Kawajiri in Japan, who was, like, a legend. And now, what was that like, by the way? Like, just did you, what, what was your favorite place to fight? Because you fought in – I wrote down everywhere you fought. Uh, uh, a, a thousand percent Japan is my favorite, UFC, for sure. UFC, Bellator, Ryzen, MFC, LFA, and Kimbate. Your yep. favorite your, – and so what was your favorite? My favorite was absolutely Ryzen. So the way that I tell everybody, like, Ryzen is about the fighters, right? Like, they do the parade of champions. They're really about honoring their warrior. And then, like, the UFC and Bellator are more about the actual show and the production, right, where the fighters are, like, a product and they're just trying to, like, move it through. But, um, man, to go from fighting in the UFC and and being, like, you know, on the prelims to, like, automatically being the headliner and main event versus Kawajiri, who's still top 10, top five greatest Japanese fighters of all time, top 100 greatest fighters of all time. And I think in, when I was a senior in high school, he was, I was still trying to finger bang chicks and this dude's winning the fucking (laughs) pride grand prix, you know, at at one fifty five. So like fighting him dude in Japan was insane. You know, it was, it was such a buildup, and, like, I, I created this monster in my head because, like, Cub Swanson had just fought him a couple months prior to that, you know, and Cub went to decision with him. 
And um, I was like, fuck, man. Like, I know how my rounds go with Cub. You know, like, and, and Kawajiri gave him a fucking fight. But I had already built up this monster in my head. So when I actually got a hold of him and when I felt his power, I was really, really, like, underwhelmed by what he brought to the table. And You heard him. But well, by the by the time I realized that he was a paper tiger, it was too late. I already I had already fucked up. Got it. Got it. Got it. But fights same uh, promotion. You lose by split de- decision to Japanese guys in Japan. I mean, is there some fuckery going on there? Come on, go watch those fights, bro, and you tell me what happened. And they right. don't test over there, right? You don't. You don't. You can't drop a guy three times in a fight and lose a fucking decision. So. The way that this went, like, they're like, no, no, you just don't understand the way that Japanese judging is. They, they, judge, the fight. <laughs> they judge the fight as a whole. It's not the 10-point must system. I go, I'm going to give you the, the easiest analogy possible. I go, you guys have pizza here in Japan, right? And they go, yeah, we have pizza. I go, okay, if we cut that pizza into three slices and I eat two of the three slices, whose pizza is that? Right, right. And right. They, they're like, eyes got, like, really big. And I go... I don't care how you judge that. I won rounds one and two hands down. They may have won round three. Yeah. But I got multiple takedowns in each fight, multiple knockdowns and, and drops. You know, it's like I don't understand how, how they won those fights. So with Kawajiri, I got mounted for eight of the first ten minutes of round one. You know what I mean? And, and it was – I understand why I lost that one, but I still only last, lost that one by decision. So yeah. the next two – one was a Japanese guy, then one was a Korean guy. And I was like, I thought you guys didn't even like Koreans. Like, I, I, <laughs> I was like, I thought I was for sure going to be the hometown hero on that one. But no, still no. <laughs> then you finally come back to the UFC against Gustavo Lopez. Uh, Who's my teammate? Now, you took that fight on what, like one week notice? Three days. <sighs> Three days. And you guys sparred together. How did the sparring sessions go? I mean, dude, that's why I was so confident saying yes. You know what I mean? Like, I've always felt tremendous, you know, sparring him. And, I mean, he was already ready for, you know, he was in a camp. So, if you guys go back to my Instagram or Mercedes Instagram, you'll see me. I'm in full drag. I got a wig on. I got fucking makeup and lipstick on. And I'm twerking in a fucking onesie in a romper. Wait, why why are you doing this? (laughs) Because <laughs> I was drunk and it was fucking Halloween. Oh, okay. I thought, I, you guys say Halloween. I just thought you were just, that's what you did. No, it was right. not. All right, Tuesday. go on. So, like, Monday comes around and I'm hung over as shit. Jason House calls me and is like, hey, dude, we got you in the UFC. Like, this one's solid. They asked for you by name. And I went to the card and I'm scrolling and I'm like, fuck, it's Gustavo, isn't it? And they're like, yeah. How bad do you want it? And I go, I'm fine. So, like, as I hang up with, with House – Gustavo calls me and he's like, did they call you? And I go, yeah. He goes, what do you think? And I go, I mean, I love you, dude. He goes, I love you too. He goes, look, he goes, this is how I see it. It's November. I get to stay in the UFC and you get to get back in the UFC. He's like, it's a win-win for both of us. And we both go into Christmas with a little bit of money. Right. So I took, you know, he goes, let's go fucking bang it out and we'll get a beer after. So I said, yes. He said, yes. The yeah, you thing that fuck- good. You got, you got, you got, you got, what was that thing that fucked you up is what? Bro, they made, they gave me, so not only did I cut 30 pounds in three days, right? <laughs> fuck. The Thursday that I'm fucking, I'm on weight, everything's good. They call me and they go, hey, we got a, an abnormal brain scan. Um, we need to get another brain scan from you. Oh. And I go, yeah, I have a venous anomaly on the front, like the front lobe. You guys have seen this for the last fucking six years that I've been with you. Like, you already knew this. And they're like, yeah, well, we want to get another, we want to get you checked. So they send me to get an MRI the Thursday morning that I'm trying to finalize my weight cut. As I get to the MRI people, they're like, hey, have you ever had an MRI before? I go, yes. How, have you ever had an MRI on your brain with contrast? And I go, no, what's that? And they're like, oh, no, it's fine. We're just going to put an IV in you with dye. Oh my and God. I go, I can't have an IV. And they're like, no, 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 it's fine. And I'm like, Okay. And so I'm maybe like eight pounds out at this point. They put a whole fucking IV in me and then they put half an IV of dye in me and blows me right back up. Ah, to 30 pounds. 
well, 20 something. I had, so I had to fucking redo everything. In two days. Uh huh. Well, so that, from yeah, so Thursday, you, Thursday at noontime to Friday morning. Cause you were doing fine until you got caught. Do you I think was doing that, fine. Do you think that was because you had your water was light and all the weight and you're kind of, I know you don't want to make that excuses, but. No, that motherfucker hits hard, bro. You know, and he's, if you, if you look at like a couple of the people that he's put down, yeah, he's yeah, hit, yeah. Him with that, hit him with that short little inside hook. Yeah, but losing 25 pounds the day before can't help. No, it, it didn't. It for sure didn't. Now, you, you're la- now, then you lost it to Tony and you retired. Are you, are you not retired anymore? Because you keep retiring on like Facebook. I said I, I thought about retire. I didn't retire. I didn't officially say, hey, guys, this is it. I feel like I you said retired I, until, like, you, like your, kid, your kids piss you off. You want to get out of the house. And then you're I, like, not retired anymore. I, that's what I've been saying is, like, do I think it's time for me to retire? Like, possibly. No. You know what I mean? I'll be 36 this year. You know what I mean? And then, like, I get text messages, like, that, that like, like, friends and family that are sending me pictures of Glover and pictures of, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I go, see, this is, this motherfuckers are like you, why BJ keeps getting fucked up. Cause yeah. he's got family like you that are like, nah, bro, you still got it. You still got it. <laughs> Bitch, I'm trying to get out with all my fucking marbles still. And you guys keep believing in me. Like, God damn it. How many, how many kids do you have now? Four. You have four kids. You got a hot wife. Uh, you also run a gym. Yeah. Now, it- <laughs> is that hard to do? Dude. Like trying, trying to not only be a professional still myself and be at the highest level and then also signing one of my heavyweights to Bellator, signing one of my 45ers to Fury FC and trying to sign one of my, my middleweights to fight Eric Spicely for CFFC. So now I'm trying to get myself ready and get three other guys ready. You know what I mean? And how, and, much, how much gym drama is there between like – but do you have to collect dues? People come in, hey, I'll get you next week. I'll get you next month. Are you All the time, bro. I literally, I literally, it's funny that you're talking about this because I literally just got sent a spreadsheet by our books person. And they're like, why do you have 24 people free? <laughs> and I go, what do you mean? And they're like, yeah, these are all the people that have something in the system and no card on file or haven't paid for the last year. And I'm like, Fuck, man. I've, I've been so focused on trying to make my last years as a competitor successful so I can ride off into the sunset that I've shirked my responsibilities of being a successful business owner. So, I mean, Mercedes is probably perfect for that job because she's annoying, uh, but like fun. Uh, she, you don't have her chase people down for money? No, nah, not her, man. She ain't, the, she ain't the lady because as much as people think that I'm the, the fucking hard to swallow, like, she's brash, you know? So, and she's got, she's got a job. She works for a fucking dispensary right now. So she's got a cake job, just fucking getting weed packaged up, sent out, doing the whole fucking thing. So one of the goals for 2022 is to make sure that the front of the house on my business is working, right? I need to hire a front desk person rather than me trying to coach class get people signed in on waivers and make sure that their bills are paid before they leave the front door. How many people do you have at your gym? 200. Wow. Wow. This is in Tucson, by the way. Uh, that's yeah, one- Tucson, Arizona. We're, we're three miles away from the university of Arizona. Um, a big part of our student base is U of A students, but also uh, Davis month air force base. Now, um, did you guys close down during COVID? I feel like you would not close down during COVID. Come on, dog. Oh, um, so for people like, was the, was the, the city trying to close you down? So when Arizona's mandate came out, I printed it up and I had, a, I had it printed. The three things that they said needed to be closed down was gymnasiums, fitness clubs, and outdoor river tubing operations. <laughs> okay. Two of those are very vague and ambiguous. Yes. One of them is very, very specific. <laughs> within that within that ambiguity is where our loophole lies because they didn't cover martial arts they didn't cover cover yoga and they didn't cover dance uh studios mm-hmm. right yeah. so um i did get people calling the health department on us and when they would call me i would go yeah yeah i'm, I'm very familiar with the state mandate that's out currently 
I go, can you please tell me what my business license falls under? And they go, yeah, yeah, let me check out. And they go, oh, it falls under miscellaneous instruction. I go, but it's definitely not a gym, right? And it's definitely not a fitness club. And we, can, we can all agree that it's not an ri outdoor river tubing operation, right? Cool. Have a nice day. Wow. Wow. You should have teach a course on that, on how to stay open. I did, bro. I, I did. I literally, there was a, a group that we were in of like 15 to 25 different local Arizona business owners that were all martial arts based. There's like a couple Karens in, in there. You know what I mean? They're like, we need to go to the governor's office and we need to make our, our voices heard. And I go, Hey, listen, have you motherfuckers never gone to a party without your parents' permission? You don't say, Hey, I'm going to go to this rage. Your mom is, are you cool with that? They're going to go fuck. No. Hey mom, I'm going to go to uh, Adam's house and we're just going to play video games for the night. Maybe watch a movie. You cool with that? Yeah, absolutely. Then I get to Adam's house and Adam's like, Hey bro, we're going to this rager. Oh fuck. Okay. I guess so. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're like, we need, we need clarification. And I go, listen, if you're going to ask for clarification, you get the answer. You don't want to fucking hear. I go right now. We are not on their radar. If yeah. you want to bang your drum and bring attention to us, I'm personally going to go fucking break your windows and burn your gym down. <laughs> I go, this is the thing. I go, I'm, you're trying to feed your kids. I'm trying to feed my kids. Don't fucking say anything about martial arts. Let us, let's just fly real yeah. low on the radar. And a lot of gym and a lot of the other gym owners were like, fuck yeah, that's so smart. Like, let's just not say anything and let's just keep going. I go, but here's the thing. Make sure you guys have that mandate on hand. So when one of these city workers show up, you can tell them that we don't fall under that criteria. Yeah. Here was the, here was the other thing. We did have a health department person try to come into the gym. And I said, whoa, 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 you got to back out the front door. And they were like, oh, shit. So they walked out. And I go, I'll talk to you out front. And they're like, yeah, we're here to see if, the, if you're up with, uh, with protocol. And I go, do you have a membership here? And they go, no, we're the city. And I go, how many businesses are you coming from right now? And they're like, well, we hit this, the, the businesses that are down this block. I go, so you're coming from a bunch of other businesses that I don't know what their sanitary protocols are. <laughs> I go, you don't have a membership here. Therefore, you cannot come into my gym. I go, that's how serious we are about this. <laughs> that's awesome. And they were like, well, we got to check out. I go, here's the thing. We have hand sanitizing stations. I make every uh, member make, check their temperature before they come in. And I make sure they wash their hands in the bathroom before they step on the mats. End of story. Goodbye. Uh, I love it. By the way, my Mercedes is doing comedy now. I tell her she's very good. I watched her set. She wants to open up for me. I said, no problem. She just beat Tara La Rosa in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, dude. That, how big? You know who that is. So that's a big-ass win, right? She was number one in the world. She yeah, dude. The number, I mean, she was arguably top three. She's a pioneer <laughs> of MMA. I thought you were going to get killed. No, no offense, Mercedes. I thought you were going to get fucking destroyed. Uh, uh, you and me both. I was just uh, trying to. But, okay. but you won. I mean, you, I mean, well, I know Tara isn't in, like, the best shape, whatever. But, Boy. like. But you won. Yeah, points. But, dude, like, you don't understand. Like, this girl was number three in the two in the world. She was the one of the best of all time. Like, if you look at top fighters of all time, she gets not on the list a lot of times. People don't know her. But she was legitimately ranked, like, number one or two in the world. Well, and, she, uh, she, she was just one of those old dogs, one of the pioneers, right, that, like, before the rankings and all that shit came out, it was Tara. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And, like, yeah. when people are like, oh, well, you know, this is fucking sub-only jiu-jitsu. I'm like, do you understand that woman? took ADCC trials and took second at ADCC. Like she's yeah. still one of the, a great wrestler, great jujitsu artist. Very, very serious. Well, we took her serious, dude. We, we took a very serious camp with her. And, um, to me, the, the, the inaction in five minutes was a lot, right? Like Tara shot with like the last 45 seconds and Mercedes all of a sudden went into gear, snapped her into a front headlock, butt dragged her spun score to the back and then put her into side control and then the bell rang if there was maybe 45 more seconds mercedes would have had her back like that would have been great but our game plan regardless was to go into the ebi overtime rounds with tara because there, there's just no way that she's getting as many reps as we are with that rule set you know, there's a lot of backstory to this so tara la rosa recently like came on under fire because she was like I guess considered one of the proud girls, or she was a proud girl, oh. like a proud boy, proud girl. And she went to the Capitol rally and like maybe hang out with a crowd that 
isn't a crowd that I would hang out with, uh, to say it uh, nicely. And, and Mercedes started her career as, an, uh, she was an a, a exotic dancer, but like a feature one. Like she was like the exotic dancer. So while this yeah. girl was fighting, you know, the likes of Cyborg or whoever, Cara, she was on the pole. So there was a, a lot of things. <laughs> so it was a whole... Working on her grip, which is yeah, very important. Yeah, working on her grip. But she's like, <laughs> hasn't had the most success. So then she's always doing these like, Mercedes always doing this like female jiu-jitsu stuff or it's like girls camp or it's a bunch of like, like naked chicks rolling around. Like I, it was just crazy. It was, it was nuts. Uh, but she loses, she just loses a lot. So for her to act, for her, her to win against one of the best girls ever was, it's a, it's a huge uh, feather. That, that's one that we needed, bro. And like, the last 2021, like my whole team was taking L's left and right. And like, I was looking at me like, what the fuck am I doing as a coach that is leading this to happen? Right. Not, nothing. You're doing but nothing. When we were, when, when we look at who we're fighting, we're not, it's not Naga. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not just some local fucking weekend warrior shows. Like it's submission underground. It's ADCC trials. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's combat jujitsu. It's, you know, third coast. So it's like all these top jujitsu shows, that we were losing at. So, but dude, yeah. So Tara after, right. She stands up and, and like at, in the back, she's like, you motherfucker. I was like, Oh, well, we, I was like, this is a confusing thing with like the proud boy shit. She goes, slaps her fucking chunk. She was like, do I look like a fucking boy to you? Do I look like a fucking proud boy? And I was like, okay. There's a whole bunch of miscommunication. Oh, that's been going. Cause she's always been, Tara's always very nice to me. I've had her on the show. She's and like, and she recently posted a picture of her car. And it was like in rough shape, and she's like, it, like the muffler broke for the nineteenth time, like. But like, like Tara's kind of, she's always been very nice to me. I, I, I think that she got a little bit too caught up in some stuff, some you know, with some political stuff. That like, I don't know. But Fuck it, didn't, didn't we all though? Like the thing, like I remember Tara when I trained with her back at at Jackson's, right? And like, she she wasn't. She didn't strike me like anything that anybody's painted her out to be. Obviously, we don't, we like, it's not like we were eating together and spending, you know, and all this time together. But when you train with people, you kind of get a feel for who they are as like a person. And like, I don't remember Tara being like that. So, like, when this whole thing's going down, I just let Mercedes and her fucking. But, yeah, but, but didn't she have the okay sign? Like, the. All the time. All the fucking that time. Was, that was not good. Even if it doesn't mean what people think it means, you know what people you know. think it means. Don't do it, you know. Yeah. So then, what are you? What are you doing? Like that was that was the thing where I'm like, what is she doing? What is she doing? Like, what, yeah. And and it was it was almost in every picture. Like, I'm, but I'm like, why, are, why? Like, okay, let's say it doesn't mean white supremacy, which I guess I ne growing up I always thought okay just meant like okay, uh, that's what it meant. But now you know what it is, and you're dressed up in all camouflage, and you're putting it up uh, with, with like you know how that's gonna look. Yeah. So uh, especially while you're living, especially while you're living in Portland, you know what I mean. And oh. so, what are you doing? So it was became like this weird. There was a lot of backstory. A lot, a lot of if it was a twenty four, there should have been like a twenty four seven countdown between Mercedes <laughs> and that. Hey, Kale fucking loved it, dog. Like he he was the one that was like, this was the best Twitter beef of all time. It, it got crazy. It got it got crazy, Bill. It, like it got <laughs> fucking nuts. Uh, and then somehow I got like thrown into it. Like ta like. Mercedes is like, can you? Stop now. I'm like, Stop. I well, I joke. what was the joke? No, I didn't even make any joke. It was like between them two. It wasn't even like it was just back and forth of just like there was like six people that were. It wasn't exactly a huge thing. It was just bro nuts. Like I was gonna send you some shit because like me and me and my me and my lead brown belt. I was like, he's. I said, hey, they're calling this one the Battle of the Dust Bunnies, and he fucking lost. It, <laughs> it, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was nuts. It was, it was, it was funny though. So, uh, so Burchek, so are you looking for the fight again or no? Yes, dude. Yes, I, I, man. The thing that I'm kind of sour about is Bellator's coming to Phoenix January 29th, and LFA's coming February 11th. Why am I am I not on either of those cards? Right. Well, maybe, okay, let's just say at the very at the very least, like my career's done and I just suck, right? I'm still one of the most major ticket sellers in Arizona, and if there's any up and comers that need to fucking build a name, like here I am, you know. But it's not gonna be a fucking walk in the park. That's the thing is like, I just have so much shit on my plate as a person that I'm running my business half ass. I'm running up my fight team half ass as a coach. And then I'm running my own camp and career half-assed, you know? 
And it's like, how, how can I, if I truly decide to run back into being a fighter full time, whole ass, I, I still believe I can compete with the top 50 dudes in the world. No, like fucking hands down. Of course you can. You got to have a full camp. Though. That's the problem is that like, you need a full camp. You can't, no more two days, three days, no more fucking well, die in your head. I mean, they offered, grand they, drag. they offered me Ray Borg for that Eagle FC uh, card. Um, Jan, I think it's the same thing, January 29th or 28th. Um, but it's just, it's too short notice. I'm like, dude, I'll Jay. take short notice against, you know, trash bags. But the, like at the end of the day, Ray Borg was still like number three or number four when he left the UFC. Cody Gibson yeah. took that fight, I think. Yeah, that's a dope. I, I like that fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so, man, it's tough. I mean, yeah, I'm you, gonna, you, you have Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard's number, right? Yeah, I'm in a pickle, though, man. Like, I don't even know if I want to go back to the UFC. You know, like, it, it's just right now it looks to me like a puppy mill. They, there's so many people in the UFC I'd never fucking heard of. Do you remember on Friday nights on Access TV, we could watch LFA, the MFC, CFFC, uh, CES. There were so many springboard promotions coming up that you knew who these kids were. Where are all these kids coming from? We, I don't even know. No. Have, have you thought about it? The one championship pays a, a fuck ton, apparently. They have tons of promotion over there. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're publicly traded on the Asian market, I believe, and they they're had a, a $4.2 or $4.5 billion evaluation, which is what Zufa got sold for to WMEIMG. So, like, when you look at what the evaluation is, they should definitely be able to pay – what well, they do pay their fighters very well, but their, their, their fan base, they're, they're covering a whole other market that is just – Way greater than, than North America and South America. Now, are you in shape? How many workouts are you doing per day? I'm doing two a days and three a days. Like, I'm getting ready for a, co a combat jiu-jitsu match, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Um, Mercedes owns uh, bullpen submission series, and we're bringing the first ever combat jiu-jitsu tournament to Tucson, to, to Arizona. And who are you going up against? So first round, I'm going up against uh, Benjamin Tapia. He's a, he's a Mexican fighter out of uh, Hermosillo, Mexico. He's been on Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds twice, I believe. Um, and then there's on the other side of the bracket, there's uh, Cody Owens, the Texas Zombie. Um, he's, out of, he's out of Houston or Austin, Texas. He's also been on Combat Jiu-Jitsu Worlds uh, several times. Um, and then there's MMA fighter Andres Ponce. Um, he's only one of the three guys to ever beat Juan Archuleta. Um, which was by submission, which was in, uh, which was in world series of fighting in Phoenix back in the day. So, um, it's a four man bracket. I, I wanted to get an eight man, but there's still just a lot of people that are real hesitant to do jujitsu with palm strikes. Of course. Yeah. So combat jujitsu, cause it's fairly new, right? It's not. Yeah. Within the last, within the last four years, three years. And really, so it's just like you could do because I think they, they started just because fights were getting too static and it was like a way to keep fights moving and, like, if you're just going to hold... Right, um, exactly. But, like, there, there's, like, palm strikes and then there's, like, people who can fucking do some ninja shit and get a real strike out of it. Uh, okay, I'm one of those guys. There's a lot of, there's a lot of just jujitsu guys that, like, bitch slap, right? And then the guys that know how to cock their hand and really use their palm to inflict damage, you know? And, like the guys that I drill with, they're like, bro, it feels like you're punching me. And yeah. like, I've not been hit to the body like that with a palm strike. And I'm like, that's why, like, that's why I think a lot of these guys, if you've been watching combat jujitsu, there's this, this weird mentality that you can win combat jujitsu without throwing strikes yeah. because two or three champions that have done it so far. But the only reason that they're able to do that is because their opposition is also not throwing strikes. Right. Right? So, like, um, Eddie created combat jiu-jitsu to keep people's jiu-jitsu honest. Because yeah. there's so many guys inverting and going under and bringing, you know, for leg locks and stuff like that, when you leg lock somebody, you're committing two hands to the leg. Yep, your which, face is open. And your face is open. So, um, in the first couple combat jiu we saw some violent motherfuckers like Chad George. Jesus Christ. Chad George, I mean, he's a little bit older than me, and that motherfucker still got it, bro. He's, he's a hammer. 
Um, but he's, you know, he's, he's an older guy. So he's got, he's got some injuries and stuff like that, that he's, he's trying to work through. But, um, then you started seeing guys, you know, the leg lockers really jumping on legs quick and the guy's not having a chance to strike. Um, but I, I want to show like, the thing is, is you can win combat jujitsu without throwing strikes only if your opposition is also not throwing strikes. Makes total now sense. that, now that EBI is back, which is pure sub only jujitsu, I feel like you're going to see those guys that only want to do sub only jujitsu do EBI. And then the real hammers that want to fucking hit motherfuckers and do jujitsu are going to do combat. Yeah. Do you ever go to fight ready or uh, John Crouch's gyms? Um, I used to go to Fight Ready. Uh, when I travel here in Arizona to train, I train at uh, Javi Torres' gym at UKF, um, Chandler MMA, and and Fight Ready. How do you do against Henry? Uh, me and Henry, dude, me and Henry, I, <laughs> he used to get mad. because, like, I told him, I was like, bro, no one ever will believe me that I've taken you down in sparring before. Like, I, I, so me even fucking saying it. But um, we used to, like, he'd be like, hey, let's go light today. And then he'll just wham, big leg kick. <laughs> All right, dude. Um, but I, those are some of the best rounds I've ever had with anybody is, is Henry, man. Like, I've known him since he was a young, young kid. I've seen him win two state titles here in Arizona, move to Colorado Springs, win two state titles there. And then, obviously, you know, the rest is history of what he's done. Um, he's, he's, you know, he's said, like, hey, dude, why don't you, like, join that cringe army with me? And I'm like, bro, I, I can't do that. <laughs> How do you think like, he would have done against Volkanovski? Is is Volkanovski gonna be able to stop the takedown? I don't know. I'm I'm asking you. Does Volkanovski get into any fight and not get hit? No. I think there's I think that Henry is probably one of the most anti Volkanovski guys that you could put Volkanovsky up against. I think he's got enough power to, to drop Volkanovsky or at least get him dazed enough for a takedown and then potentially finish it on the ground. And I don't think Volkanovski can take Henry down. So it's like, that. I would really like to see that fight, dude. Really. It's crazy that UFC didn't let that happen. I think they were worried about, like, the GSP Bisbing thing, where he comes back for a fight. And then leaves. The and leaves. And then they're like, and, yeah. okay, what do we do with the division now? Yeah. Uh, I, was actually, I was actually rooting for that fight to happen, man. Like, I was actually pretty amped about it. Because when Henry shared the poster, I was like, oh, fuck, it's happening. Yeah, you know, but um, I I would love to see Henry do ADCC. Uh, obviously, he says he's the you know he's triple C. He's the greatest combat athlete of all time because he's won the Olympics and won the UFC. I would love him. I would love him to win ADCC and be like a triple crown, triple sport winner. You know what I mean? Do you think he could? Like you saw. You saw guys like Mark Kerr, who's like a wrestling background. He's in the ADCC Hall of Fame. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, but that was before it evolved, though. That's was, true. That was just like these guys just wrestlers. I don't know if you know this, Bill. Like back in the day, Mark Kerr was like roided out of his mind. He was also like oh, yeah. a champion wrestler. Uh, he was like he just basically taking guys down and holding them, and then winning and and becoming the and people hated that. But, yeah, but did. You did you see John Salter uh, at ADCC trials this last one? He no, had no. he had a very similar game, but um, man, he was just betting on overtime. He was betting on those last little bits where he had to get a takedown. And then there was guys that were just uh, they were okay staying on their back during the points portion and not letting him pass. Um, some of his matches got boring, but he had a very similar game of. I and mean, look, of if, you can't, if you can't beat it, what's crazy about about that whole thing is that Mark Kerr lost to uh, Kurt Angle by one point for the Olympic <laughs> trials. One point. Like five to four. And he beat him twice for that year. And then Kurt Angle goes and wins the gold and then becomes the WWE champion and Kurt becomes the pride champion. Imagine, like, it would have been flipped. Like, he, Bro, like, that'd be like, like well, here's the thing. is like, a lot of people don't know Henry's got really good leg locks. Every time that we got in a scramble on the floor, that motherfucker was trying to heel hook me. Uh, the original coach that was at Fight Ready was from Serbia or Lithuania. I think he's Lithuanian. So he had like a bunch of like combat sambo techniques and like heel hooks and leg locks that he was showing Henry. Um, so I was really caught off guard. And this is like right around the time when I had quit the gi and I got with 10th Planet. So like the leg lock game was already something I was fucking with. And like Henry throwing everything at me, I was like, holy shit, like, he actually knows a bunch of shit when it comes to leg locks. So, yeah. 
Uh, and I think a wrestler with leg locks is one of the most dangerous types of grapplers. Like, look at Nicky Rod, you know what I mean? Um, now that Craig Jones is learning how to actually wrestle, um, I, dude, I mean, that's, that's probably one of the most dangerous types of athletes. I just hope that Henry's all that DMT with Mike Tyson and the ayahuasca trips uh, and the marijuana and the mushrooms, I hope it hasn't taken a toll. What's wrong you know? with that? It takes a more creative Adam. I, I know, but I'm not sure that's what Volkanovski's doing. You, you know, know so yeah, there there's still dudes that are operating at the highest level. And like when you're in the UFC, you know what I mean? Like dudes everybody's operating at one hundred percent. How can I operate at one oh two? You know what I mean? That that's what's happening. And the only reason that I haven't delved into psychedelics yet is because it's for trauma, right? Like people making peace with demons and, and trauma and things that have happened to them and understanding why they tick. I don't want to kill my demons just yet because I'm not done fighting. If, you have four kids, dude. You, you got to worry about fucking taking your kids to school. Forget that about, too. Forget about your DMT and your ayahuasca. You have four fucking kids and you have a wife yeah. in the dispensary business. Uh, dude. So, you know, come on, man. You have a gym but, to run. But that's you the thing. Like, I don't know. 20 people haven't paid the fucking membership. Let's get them to pay the membership before you delve in the fucking psychedelics, bro. You like the toad. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Oh, the toad. We have those toads here in Tucson. I, Tucson, right? The right by Tucson. Okay. I'm not going around licking frogs, bro. Now, have you, have you uh, met with Don Fry at all? He's in Tucson. Um, I've, I've seen him a couple times. We, did, we were supposed to do this joint interview thing, and he ended up getting caught up. Uh, but, but he's, yeah, I believe if he's not living in East Tucson still, he's still down in Sierra Vista, which is about an hour away from me. He's got a new podcast out called, uh, Toxic Masculinity. It's him and, um, it's him and what's his name? And Dan Severn. God, I would love to get on that. Yeah. I'll, I'll text him. I'll hook you guys up. Yeah. I guess Dan's living out in, uh, in Fountain Hills, Arizona now, which is like a little bit East of Scott, Northeast of Scottsdale. Yeah. So I mean, just, uh, it's a real man's man. Well, listen, man, those- <laughs> Those dudes are the salt of the earth, bro. Like <laughs> the best. Well, listen, Burchak, thank you for everything, brother. Uh, congrats to your to your wife on her her her, her win. Uh, thank congrats, you. Congrats to you on winning in life, and uh, have a good weekend. Thank you, bro. Take care, brother. Yeah. See you later. Thank you, sir. Anytime. That was that was Burchak. Nice guy. Smart guy too, huh? Yeah, fucking. You know. All those books behind him. Wearing a lot of hats, that guy, you know? I yeah. mean, not, not in the bedroom. He's got kids, but, like, yeah. So, uh, uh, anyway, listen, you're the best. Uh, have a great weekend. And hey, so I got a show Saturday in San Diego. Yes. Laugh- Headlining Saturday, Laugh Factory, San Diego, for the few people who are still watching this right now. Yes, you and uh, Daphne Wayans, right? She's opening? Shantae, yeah. Shantae Wayans, yes, yes, yes. Shantae yeah, Wayne, yeah. it's going to be a great show. San Diego, go see him. I'm in uh, Iowa next week. I'm at the Des Moines Funny Bone uh, in Iowa. But uh, thank you, man. Go see Bill Dawes. Thanks to our guests. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. Bye.